And Peter in Colonia, how are you? I'm pretty good. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Hi, I'm, I'm an atheist, and I really like the show. Wanted to thank you guys for putting it on. Thanks so much. Yeah, uh, my question was on the topic of objective morality. Mm -hmm. um, I've never really heard a good definition of it. My, my understanding of it seems to be that uh, if something is objectively wrong, then it should be wrong from all reference frames. No, that's, that's not how I would use it. Um, then please give me yours. Well, actually, we're not going to have time in the show. If you Google for superiority of secular morality, you'll find mm -hmm. a video online of a talk that I gave for a couple years. Um, the nuts and bolts of it are that... Um, what we mean by morality, I'd also recommend Sam Harris's book, uh, The Moral Landscape, which says a lot of the same things that, that I've been saying. Um, but the nuts and bolts of it are that morality, if it means anything, it's about the well-being of thinking creatures, and that's how Sam puts this. And so okay. as physical beings in a physical universe, our actions have consequences that are dictated by physical laws. They are not merely products of our mind. If I, um, if I punch Russell in the face... Um, that's all determined by, by the laws of physics in the physical reality. And I don't like this metaphor. I know. And, <laughs> but, but the result of that is harm. Now, you can have conversations about, well, why do we care about avoiding harm and why do we care about well-being? And I don't care a rip for those discussions because mm -hmm. I, I'm already fine with saying that when we, define, when we talk about morality, we are already conceding that we have a concern about well-being. If the only yeah. objection is, why do we care about well-being versus not, the answer is that we do. We are the products of uh, beings who cared about that because the ones who didn't care about it died off. Right. And, I mean, to some extent, the things that people value are going to be somewhat subjective, uh, yeah. You know, if I like one thing that Matt doesn't like, then that's, uh, you know, then that's something that's subjective to my desires and interests. But once we acknowledge that people's desires and interests are fixed, which I think is kind of what you're saying, Matt, uh, and you should also check out um, Dan Finke's blog, Cam Camels with Hammers, because he's a yeah. philosopher with a lot of interest in this topic uh, also. Once you've acknowledged uh, what these desires are, the question of how to maximize uh, actions with, with respect to uh, doing the best for everybody involved is, can be kind of an objective question. Now, objecti yeah. objective and subjective morality, because we're already talking about morality, and, I, and I'm, I'm pointing out that it's about well-being, that's a different subject from whether or not uh, moral relativism is true, and I reject moral relativism. Moral relativism is, is the idea that something is or isn't moral because a culture or society declares it to be so. And that puts you in this position where you're saying there are no moral truths, there are only moral opinions. And as long as morality is about well-being, there must be moral truths, just like there are truths about our physical well-being that as a oh, generally I, I, generally generally speaking drinking battery acid is not good for you and generally speaking we can make similar claims about other actions well, well yeah i was, I was going to make the point that um if we can have a discussion about what a person values from their moral system and whether or not a certain action will cause harm or benefit that that thing that is valued, whether it's a person or something, uh, some kind of possession, uh, it, it's always seemed to me that that uh, religious people will try to claim that their belief system, their morality, is objective in order to shut off debate. Yeah, it's not right. Um, yeah. So I mean, for example, I, we'd have to go through religions independently, but for example, Christianity, which isn't one thing. Um, there's many different Christianities. Um, yeah. And so their, their solution to this problem, first of all, here's the thing. Uh, I'm aware of no objections to secular moral systems that are both true and, as in there are real problems and not just, you know, non-problems, non and that those problems are solved by appealing to religious morality. Uh, and furthermore, 
I don't think religious moral systems are moral systems at all. They're pronouncements about morality. They are, there's no mechanism there. There's no path to discovery of the why of morals. It's generally along the lines of divine command or this is God's nature, any number of things like that. And so saying that there's an objective source in, in a God is no more a solution to a problem than um, saying that the objective source is uh, pick a random book where the author is is dead and can't change his mind, and now we are stuck with this fixed set. That is an objective standard that we can then value things with. Um, also, think of it this way. Uh, you know, the, the question of determining what are the right mo- moral actions are actually kind of similar to the question of determining what's true about the universe through science. Um, the universe exists outside of us, and it does what it does independent of what we think about it. But as I've been saying, our knowledge about what's true isn't very good, and so it's our job not to make stuff up uh, that makes us feel comfortable, but to actually observe things and figure out what's actually true in the universe. Well, well, that, Similarly, that is- there can be an objective morality that's out there to be discovered and yet coming up with some religious proclamation that, oh, I absolutely know what it is and therefore no further thought about it is necessary, that doesn't solve the problem. It just gives you a convenient illusion of knowledge of absolute morality. Well, yeah, well, it seems like uh, Christians uh, will, will oftentimes... Uh, claim objective morality because the person, the entity enforcing it is omnipotent. Right. As if the power of the right. person distributing the justice m- makes it moral. Their, their system doesn't distribute justice anyway. Um, yeah. One of the objections that I get from, from Christians quite often is that, um, well, under your system, Matt, somebody could slaughter an entire family, and as long as we <laughs> don't actually catch them, they're never going to get punished. And I there say, that. that's correct, it could happen. I mean, that's true and even if... <laughs> and under your system, the same thing is true, except that it's possible that that person gains forgiveness and salvation and gets to go on and enjoy a pleasant, <laughs> wonderful life, a uh, wonderful afterlife. Eternally. At least, at least the potential for injustice in the system that I'm advocating dies, it dies with us rather than, you know continuing on afterwards. We are almost completely out of time. One last little point to make on this um, that I have uh, continually addressed Christians with is, how on earth did you determine that God is the good one and Satan is the evil one? What objective (laughs) standard did you point to other than God? Uh, And if you pointed to God, how is that not a big cheating circular argument? 